this is Natalie of the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche and I'm here to bring you another video. I'm going to be away next week so I figured tonight I should make the video because tomorrow I'm going to the cross stitch cupboard and I have to pack and then Sunday I gotta help my husband with the boat. <laughs> so we have a boat and we take it down to the Keys every year for lobster season. I will post some pictures on the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche website. I do bring projects with me that I do stitch because we can't possibly be out on the boat all day and night. And also if the weather's not good, we don't go on the boat. So and my husband sleeps. That's what he likes to do on vacation. So he chills, sleeps, watches TV. I go in the pool and stitch. So, anyway, it's been a long week. And I, I am pretty busy at work right now, which is awesome, because I changed jobs. And at first, it sort of started off slow, but that's good, because it sort of got me to use their system and, and uh, get the word out, and people now know where I'm located. And now all the patients are coming in. Uh, I'm doing surgeries and uh, building up some OB. Uh, my job is part of how the vintage cross stitch niche started. So I've been in South Florida since 1997. I came down, I joined a group, and shortly thereafter I started my own practice. I was in my own practice for a number of years, I think eight, nine years, something like that. And uh, eventually joined uh, Tenant Healthcare, which is a big hospital corporation. They uh, bought out my practice, they didn't really buy it, they sort of took it over and uh, now everybody worked for them. And it was good for a long time, I worked for them for 10 years. And uh, towards the end, I didn't have anybody to cover the practice when I was off. So it was a problem. So I took another job for a short period of time, and the job wasn't for me. It, uh, it was doing work at a trauma hospital, and it was extremely difficult. So that was one issue. It was it was hard, <laughs> okay? And I give a lot of credit to people who are, who are there. So that was one issue. And then I, I was selling uh, some of my stash. I have a lot of stash because when I see something that's a good deal, I'll buy it, whether or not I need it or not. So I'm always buying linen, I'm always buying uh, supplies or kits or charts or whatever because I'll see it, I'll be like, wow, that's, that's a great deal, I'll buy it. And then sometimes I'll keep it and sometimes I'll, I'll sell it because how much do you really need? So I was selling off some of my linen at one point on one of the stash unload on Facebook. Then I got the idea that I wanted to make a kit. So I made this awesome kit with linen and a, a cup, right? It was a depression cup, depression glass. It was green, beautiful. It was like six months ago, maybe maybe longer. And I, I, I put some floss with it and some linen and buttons and all kinds of stuff. And the person on that stash unload site, one of the, uh, the it, well, page, whatever, it's not site, page, um, was mad, got really mad because she also sold some vintage, what she thought were vintage items and she thought that my cup competed with her. And she kicked me off. <laughs> so I wasn't allowed to sell on there anymore. So here I was going through this job where I, I just thought wasn't, wasn't good. I definitely was underpaid for the amount of work I did. And besides being underpaid, I was physically just beat. It was very difficult for me. And I had had somebody just kick me off a stash unload site stash and load page on Facebook, which I was like, wow, I can't believe that. This is a hobby, guys, a hobby. 
So I was talking to somebody who actually had bought something from me, some linen. She's so nice. Her name is Lisa. And she said, why don't you start your own page that sells these ideas? That, you know, because I was like, well, I'd love to make these kits. So I started the page with the idea of selling some kits and selling some vintage items that could be repurposed. And then I, I said, wow, this page is growing. Let's just make it a great place where people can link their Etsy pages. People can talk about vintage stuff, can show their designs. I can show my stuff and it's a nice place. There's no personal information shared on there or nobody has so far. When I mean personal, I mean like, God forbid, you have some medical issue, whatever, or you know, personal, real personal issue. Nothing got shared on there, which is good because I, I think that's a lot for a, a page like that. And no political talk, because the last thing I want is any fights. And everybody has to be nice to each other. That was my number one rule. And you know what? We're almost at 750 members. One day we'll be at a thousand members and I am just amazed. It's only been a few months and this has fulfilled a dream. It actually like took me from a place that I was sort of unhappy and feeling sorry for myself and then I got kicked off this site and said, wow, oh my God, am I that bad a person? And put me back into doing something that I love and sharing it with other people. Anyway, hence the vintage cross stitch niche and now the videos. The videos aren't quite as popular as the, the Facebook page, but I hope we get there one day. All right, so shall we do finishes? Yeah, let's start with finishes. Um, I know I showed you this. And by the way, this is a Garan Toten bag. My oh, I love this fabric. Love it. Super, super well made. Ron, Ronnie of Garan Toten, Toten bags makes these bags. Fabulous. Gary stitches, and I've stitched with him <laughs> down at the cross stitch cupboard. So I showed you this. This once again is Lucy Beam Love and Stitches All Hallows Eve Heart. Fabulous, right? Done on Anubis. Anubis is by Under the Sea Fabrics. I did mine on E Designs Halloween Eve. Believe it or not, Halloween Eve for the Halloween Eve Heart. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be that round pillow, right? And then on my page, I put a little uh, pick one, which fabric do you like? And the majority of people loved this fabric with it. The other choice was this fabric. I like this fabric, but everybody liked, and I like this too, I guess, this fabric too. I couldn't decide actually, that's why I put it on there. I said, guys, what do you think? And then I also have, this is Peeps Lost Sheep Mini Pom Poms. They look black, right? But they're actually a very, very dark green. So I've got the pom poms, which are gonna go around the pillow. I've got the beautiful design. And now I've got the gorgeous Dames of the Needle dyed velvet. And this one's called Da Vinci's Charcoal. I think it's gonna look fab. So I am taking this to the cross stitch cover tomorrow in Wilton Manors, Florida. And Karen is going to do this for me. I hope there's enough of this to go around the pillow. Is there? I think there is, yeah. Dames of the Needle is available at many shops. The cross stitch cover doesn't sell any of her stuff, I don't think. I don't, I don't think so. But a lot of people do, and on her website, this 1 8th yard is $10.20. And this is 
once again, Da Vinci's charcoal. I love it. I really do. So this pillow needed to have some grunginess to it. And when I say grungy, I don't mean that in a bad way, because I love grungy. And now I got it. <laughs> so that is now going to be a complete finish. Second complete finish I have to show you is something you've also seen, but I don't think you've seen it finished. Is this Halloween Greetings by Blackbird Design. It's just a little wrinkly yeah, it is, but that's okay. So I threw the button on there. I ordered some, um, some a charm, a Halloween charm, a, a sterling one, I might put it on there too. And once again, I couldn't decide what fabric to use. And overwhelmingly, actually I put this and this. <laughs> overwhelmingly, everybody loved this. This is called Canned Pumpkin, once again by Dames of the Needle. Lovely stuff. So we've got this and this and this. It's a little bit of, it's not vintage, but it's nice. It's, well, when I say vintage, it might be some sort of, some sort of lace to go on here. And this beautiful, beautiful trimming, this vintage beaded trimming. I can't hold it all up, but anyway, it's going to look fabulous. At least three people asked me if I was going to sell this chart, the Blackbird chart, and I did sell it to somebody because she really wanted it. <laughs> and I, you know, I don't in general make a profit on the stuff I sell. Sometimes I do. If I do, it's a few dollars. It's enough to, to pay for my bother. You know, that's about it. Anyway, so we've got these two finishes. Let's talk about a start. Stacy Nash Primitive's Halloween Pin Keep. I didn't mean to start this, but I, I started it last night by accident. And here's the beginning. Did I pull the threads to show you? No, I didn't, but that's okay. This is my own fabric. I found a small, really grungy piece of fabric. See, it's got all those lines and imperfections, and I love it for this. And where the heck are the colors? I think I left them on my... I don't have the colors here, but that's okay. Um, the colors I used are... It says Carriage House Black. I pulled Raven. I used Raven. I used, for the whitish area, Toasted Marshmallow. I used Ginger Snap, which is the called for orange. And instead of endive, I used a classic color works called Peapod. So it's only because I had these. So this should be finished pretty quick. I should finish this this weekend, no problem, hopefully. A new start. Let's talk about some issues. Brenda Gervais Soar. It's lovely, isn't it pretty? I think it's gorgeous. There's something about it that draws me to it. Called for linen, I have, is this beautiful 30 count on onyx. It's a beautiful color. I can't stitch on it. Can't see the holes. I originally bought 40 count for this. It was 40 count, uh, what's the name of that company? Hard Stitch Threads. A beautiful ch chalky black linen. Thought it would look fabulous with this, and it would. Could not stitch on it. I said, okay, let me pull out 30 count. Pulled it out, could not stitch on it. 
So what did I do? So I'm gonna order 25 or 26 count because I, I can't stitch on any of this. And lo and behold, it came in the mail and I was happy. And last night I put it on a roll of frame. And first thing happened is it started to shred pretty bad. I think just because that's, ooh, I got, that was uh, coffee beans. That's the second thing that happened, but it started to shred and I was lazy. I was tired. I had come home from work. So I did not feel like putting this on the machine and zigzagging. And then I looked for my, uh, my thread, my thread, freight check, which I love. So easy to use. I was out of it. The bottle was empty, and then I smelled this, and it has a really funky smell. So I said, you know the heck with this, I'm not using it, at least today. And I put it in this container with a bunch of coffee beans. And it does smell better too. Not, not quite there yet, but very disappointed. So. I happened last night. I said, okay, I'm not starting that. So let's work on Harriet's Salt once again. I know you've seen this, but it's beautiful. And I started to work on it, on this beautiful Cafe au lait Kingston linen. And lo and behold, I made a mistake. And by the way, I did choose Schoolhouse Red, which is perfect for what I want. And I made a mistake and I tried to pull it out. And pulling out threads on 56 count linen is like pulling it out on, on any other linen, doing it over one, it's hard. And I pulled a thread, so there's no hole where the thread is missing. So people are like, you can get, do you see it? People are like, you can fix that, just go over it. No, it'll drive me crazy. I'll know it's there. I'm just going to get another piece of linen and restart. It is what it is. Linen at the cross stitch cupboard was $22. I'm not going to drive me crazy, drive myself crazy for $22. Okay. So that's where I'm up to. And so tonight I'm going to, after dinner, I'm going to work on the Stacy Nash piece. And that's all I'm gonna work on tonight. More finds. Well, first we'll talk about the non-cross stitch finds. I found this beautiful package of linen, it was $6. $6 and change. And I thought it was well worth it because it's quite a nice variety of linen blue check, green check, red check, and black check. <laughs> Plus some country apple. I think that's cool. Apple reminds me of the 80s though, but like it. Then you have a red and a green. white and then this humongous piece and I mean absolutely humongous piece of, of fabric that's got beautiful butterflies on it like six dollars the whole thing so I said now I have some fabric for finishes not that I will always do finishes because I don't do most of them Although, but I can bring them over there and they can use it if I want cool fabric. One find. Second find was this boot made by Old Foley in Staffordshire, England. It's darn cute. It's got little openings for laces. It's got flowers. And it's gonna make a great pin cushion. You're gonna just make your round pin cushion and stick it right in there. And somebody already bought this, okay? Because I put it on my page and I got uh, somebody emailed me, hey, you can sell that to me. And I sold it, it's not for very much money, but I wanted somebody to have this because it is cool. I certainly don't have the time. 
next. Yellowware. Yellowware bowls are collectible. I found this one at an amazing price. It's got a little bit of damage. It's not quite damaged. It's like, this almost looks like it was done at the factory. I don't know. And, and then it looks like somebody patched it there. Whatever it is, it's awesome. It's old. It's perfect for me. Yellowware bowl. For smalls, for sticking fabric in. Let's see if my fabric all fits in here. For whatever you want. But that I was not going to pass up for the deal I got it for. A Halloween find were, I have three of these. They're apothecary jars made by Ra Raven something. Let's see. Raven's Head, which is a British company. I looked it up. I have three. I want to hold all three so that you, well, let's get the idea. Three. And for Halloween, I'm going to get some labels and put the old apothecary skull and crossbones or whatever and fill this with water that's tinted with blue or red or orange or some sort of liquid. And we're going to have cool apothecary jars for Halloween that I'm going to put in the bathroom. Now, I don't have little kids, so nobody's going to drink them. But if you have little kids, well, nothing would happen if they drank all that food coloring other than, uh, well, certain things would be colored. But I thought these were pretty cool. Now, if you're more utilitarian and not in a Halloween mood, you certainly could use this for anything. They're storage drawers. And they're, they're really nice. So these three apothecary jars, 50 cents each. I got to tell you, that's what they were. It's a good deal. One more vintage find is this. This is a coffee pot. What's the difference between a teapot, teapot and a coffee pot? Teapot is short and a coffee pot's tall. If anybody knows why, please share it with me because I have no idea why that's traditionally been the way it is. But I think my guess is that people could tell between coffee and tea. So if they wanted, they were being served or they were self-service, they can just take the coffee if they wanted coffee in the tall pot and the tea in the smaller pot, but I don't know. These were made in Japan, not always Japan, but most of them were made in Japan in the 1960s or 70s or earlier, 50s, 40s. And I'm not sure this is really cross-stitch oriented, but you certainly could store stuff in here. You could display it. You can put flowers in it, which is what I'm going to use it for if I, um, my husband every once in a while brings me flowers. I'm not 100% sure this isn't a reproduction. When I say reproduction, I mean a Chinese made item made to look like a vintage item that they sell at places like Hobby Lobby. They're, they have a lot of reproduction stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with reproduction, but the real thing to me is always the real thing. It might be a reproduction. There is a marking on it that says two liter. The fact it has a marking on it that actually says two liter makes me feel that it's less likely to be a reproduction because the reproductions don't usually have any markings at all. And they're a little, this is pretty good quality. They're usually a little thinner, so. I think it's the real deal. It has um, some wear on it, which is fine, which is what you want to see. You want to see wear. Although nowadays they beat stuff up on purpose to make it look worn, but pretty cool. And it was a good price. And finally, a surprise. I bought this I'm going to tell you what it was. It was $3.99. And I bought this because I thought the frame was unbelievable. Look at the frame. 
solid wood frame. Perfect. I said, wow, I'm going to hold it this way and I'm going to put, I'm going to put a, a, a sampler in here. I mean, it's, it's a card frame solid. It's beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. Good luck finding these kind of frames. I said for four dollars, three dollars and ninety-nine cents, I I'm gonna buy this frame. So I didn't even look and see what's in the frame. But there is a there is a label on the back that says Fine Arts Gallery of Ardmore PA. And it's the way it's framed is is it looks like somebody took a lot of care framing this. It's got some numbers and stuff on the back. So I looked at the art. It's made by a guy named Lu Luolan. And apparently it's painted, somehow reverse painted on the glass. And this is a real painting. See it? And I see one on eBay that is very similar to this, in my opinion, not as nice. And it's on there for $300. dollars. It's like wow. So now I have the dilemma, but it didn't sell. See, so and I saw I saw some others that did. So now I have the dilemma of: Do I take it out of the frame? Do I try to sell it in the frame? Because I, you know, this is not my style of art. Although it is a real piece of art. It's a real piece of art and it's a listed artist and it's an original. But what do I do? I love the frame for my own needlework. So I haven't decided. My husband says try says put it on eBay and try to sell it and see what you get. And if you don't get anything, just take it out and maybe give it to somebody that would appreciate it. Um when was this made? Well, you see the Ed, this is like a linen. Um, like, I don't know what you call this. And if you're a framer, people probably do, but this thing around your art is made of a linen material. And I saw a lot of this in the 1970s, so I'm thinking this was 1970s. But for $4, I mean, look at the frame. To me, the frame is worth an amazing amount of money. I love the frame. A solid wood frame love it and to me definitely worth the money but who knew there was an actual piece of art in here so that was interesting so now i'm like what do i do with that do you want to see my cross stitch finds yes you do so i did buy a whole bunch of cross stitch stuff i bought it because i found it at a good deal a good price and I said, I'll look through them, and I'll think about them, and I'll keep what I want, and maybe sell what I don't. So, um, they're sitting over here. Oop. Walking into something. Um, they're sitting over here, trying out. Imagine you come home, and uh, your items are sitting by the door, and they're soaking wet, because it's been storming all day and they just threw them by your door. That's what happened. So my packages have been soaking wet. So these are all damp. Really damp. But anyway, um, they're drying out. <laughs> and thank God they're in plastic. So let me show you some of these. First off, look at this. This one's called Vintage Lace by Rosewood Manor. It's a kit. That is awfully beautiful and look at all the floss it came with that is a lot of fancy floss does it come with fabric I thought it did but apparently it doesn't so what is the call for fabric it's brown this is very pretty I don't know if it's a reproduction or she probably or she made it, but it's got nice motifs in it. But once again, that's awfully beautiful. Let's keep it in the area to dry out. 
next one I've never seen by Jeanette Douglas called Summer Vintage Pillows. This is also a kit. The kit came with these really nice charms and embellishments and this really nice floss which is silk. Look at these and look how simple they are to do. Jeanette Douglas. I've never seen these. So when something catches my eye like this, I'm like, and it's a good price, I'm like, wow, I've never seen that. It's really cool. And look at the price. Stacy Stacy Nash Primitives kit called Butternut Tavern. Another one I have never seen. That's a really nice kit. And look what it comes with. It comes with a beautiful thread pack. What else? I mean, look how nicely it's packaged. This thread pack. It's got, see, I didn't even open this. Individually wrapped, just fancy floss. Beautiful fancy floss. Butternut Tavern. It's not come with the fabric, but I certainly have no shortage of fabric. It's really pretty. Heartstring Samplery, another one called Spring Flame Pincushion. I have a feeling these are club kits. Person did not say they were club kits, but doesn't. I, I think they are really pretty. And look what it comes with: fancy floss and dames of the needle. Is that Peep's Lost Sheep? No, Sea Glass Green. Uh, nice uh, mini pom poms. And look at all this floss. Mm. See, this is interesting. When you look at the model, look at the model, and look at the, what it comes with. That's not the same color. <laughs> I'm always laughing when I say so I see stuff like that. Here's another one called Work Basket by Summer House Stitch Works. I thought these actually came with linen, but they don't. Um, this is really pretty. floss keep and this one came with all these beautiful flosses $17.99 work basket summer house needleworks here's an interesting one by dames of the needle one I've never seen and this one came with interesting stuff called Halloween Halloween March drum that is very very nice and this one did come with green fabric and velvet and floss these are awfully nice some of her stuff is over one let's see it says Comes with guacamole linen by Luke Styleworks. And this is gunmetal. Nice. This is Anne Wright's 1726 Pin Keep Drum Kit by Samplers Not Forgotten. This is a complete kit. I love her kits. Look at all that stuff it comes with. I love these kits. These are great to take on a, uh, on a trip with you because they're definitely doable. <laughs> and so pretty. It's got everything, including the buttons. Limited edition. I'm sure you can't find that anywhere. Um, 
Is that it? What is this one? Oh, yeah. This is the biggie. All right, so I watch Kitten Stitcher. She's my favorite floss tuber. And um, she showed this model. She showed this model on her floss tube. I got to tell you that the sampler on this page and the model look nothing alike because the model is magnificent. I couldn't believe how beautiful it was. It is, I mean. And guess what? I saw this. So I got this. It's called Jane Patterson 1806 here once again. And this is kind of cool because I like the way that there's motifs outside of the edge. I really do like that. But this one came with Platinum Belfast linen and this unbelievable thread pack full of wool threads. It was not cheap, but I added up the price of the threads, the linen, and the chart, and it actually came out to be cost, very cost effective because look how many colors there are. And this is wool thread, which I've never worked with. Gentle Art Simply Wool. It's soft. It's beautiful. I'm s and the colors, look at the colors. So you can see both sides. So beautifully packaged as well. I don't package my stuff this nice, but and of course platinum linen. I mean, I don't know if you need to see platinum linen, but a nice big piece. Platinum linen is uh, is just a nice, and it's, look how big a piece this is. Oh my God, I wonder how big the sampler is. Ooh. All right, so this was my big purchase. The others are small, they didn't cost very much. This one was big, but worth it. Anyway, very pretty. Finally, we'll get down to our next Christmas ornament. 2011 Christmas issue. I've told you, as you can see by the last few one of, few of the videos I've done, I definitely like the old ornament issues. I mean the late 90s, early 2000 issues better than the, the latest ones. I think the latest ones don't have all the designers that I would love to see in there. Just my opinion. Not to say that the new ones don't have beautiful designs, because they do. But I think some of the old ones have more interesting. Remember, I showed you one that had a primitive needle design, and I love the primitive needle. I, I can't buy the charts now because I'm not paying $50, $60, $70 dollars for a chart. But it had the beautiful primitive needle chart in it. You can find these old editions. Just look. <laughs> anyway, we're going to go through this one. Once again, 2011 Christmas ornaments. So this is, now they, they begin, the last one I showed you, they didn't name, like there was no name for the grouping of ornaments. Now it is. This one is called Carol of Bells. And once again, I don't think I can show you individually. Um... It's hard because they're small, so I'm going to have to just show you this. Stitchworks, Heartstrings, Julia, Lu Julia Lucas, The Sampler Girl, Victoria Sampler, Forget-Me-Nots, Patricia Ann, JBW, and Angel Stitching. My favorite is this little itty-bitty one, number five, the Victoria Sampler Peace on Earth. But they're all pretty cool, huh? So that's my favorite right there, that little one. But I sort of like that guy too. That one is, who is that? 
good tidings to you. I like the finish on that. Number four, the sampler girl. What I like about the finish on that is a little bit of gingham cloth on the end. You see that? Carol of the Bells. Once again, there are recipes in here and they don't put the recipes in between. They put them at the end, which is, I think, where they belong. All right. Next, O Holy Night. Wow. Nice. Which one is my favorite? Hmm. I think I like this, which is the stocking. I like the fabric and I like the finish. But here you go. Oh, I didn't tell you the name of all these people. <laughs> okay, so this is Jeanette Douglas, Cherish, Cherished Stitches. Blackberry Lane, Homespun Elegance, Shepherd's Bush, Nikki's Creations, Old Colonial, Moss Creek, Gentle Pursuit, and Plum Street Samplers. The one I like, number four, is Homespun Elegance, just to show you again. And if you want to know which one is Plum Street, out of curiosity, is number 10, Yuletide. Now I ask, why is Plum Street and... and and Homespun Elegance not in the new magazines. I don't know. Blackberry Lane has some beautiful stuff too. I have some, some of her, they aren't kitted up. I have two of her items that uh, I really want to do. Nikki's Creations, she's in some of the newer ones. Next, Let It Snow. Seems to have a snowman theme. My favorite, I think my favorite is number two, which is Glory Be Snow Happy. Hmm, I also like number six, Blue Ribbon Designs, but there you go. Just to show you, just to tell you, Amy Brooken, Glory B, Little House Needleworks. That's cute too, the Little House Needleworks one, look at that. I like that finish. Little House Needleworks, Praiseworthy Stitches, uh, Knotted Tree, Blue Ribbon, Sam Sarah, and Val Stuff. Let's go through this. Next, the Holly and the Ivy. Britter Cup Designs, Legacy, Fern Ridge, Fern Ridge, that's my new one. <laughs> Elizabeth's Designs, Full Circle, Rosewood Mariner, Turquoise Graphics, Casey Buon, Buon Nogurio, Debbie's and the Work Basket. My favorite, just looking through these, I think is number two, Legacy Designs. That round one. But they're all cute. Hope you can see them all. I'm trying to get you to see them. Nice. Next, Blue Christmas. They're all blue. I have some blue. The Sunflower Seed, Cherry Wood, Still Stitching, Fancy Work, Dragon Dreams, Little by Little Design, Charlotte's Web, Courtney Collection, Summer House Stitch Works. That was the little kit I had. Sue Hillis and Mosey and Me. Without looking, Let's see which one I like. I actually like Holy 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 by Summer House Stitch Works. So I like them all actually, but just this one caught my eye because of the song that I happened to put on my uh, Facebook this morning. Holy Holy, the Revelation song. But look how cute these are. See them all? Which one's Jeanette Douglas? Let's see. No, I mean Sue Hillis, 10. Oh, sorry. 
Sue Hillis's little Santa. Very cute. Okay. Let's go through these. Joy to the world. Wow, these are great. Which one's my favorite? I think I like this this little this little bird. Right here. See that little bird? Um, who, who does that? Six. Blackbird Designs. Okay. Number one, Lila Studio, Lizzie Kate, Tempting Tangles, Primrose, Janny Hubble, Blackbird Designs, Imaginating, Gemini Designs, and Keepsake, Keepsake Stitches. And the one that I picked on this page happens to be a Blackbird Designs Joy which is the little blue bird, I think. It's a small one. I like them grouped together like that. Let's see. Away in the manger. Okay, I know, I, I know which one I like, number four, which is the Prairie Schooler, Christmas favorites. Just to show you, this is the one that I my eye went to. The Prairie Schooler one, that guy. I like the finish with the heart, with the star, excuse me. <laughs> heart. And these are WeWorks Charlin Designs. Excuse me. We work Charlin Designs, Acorn House, Prairie Schooler, Nordic Needle, Thistle Strads, Scandinavian Stitches, Kelson's Designs, and My Big Toe. We're almost done. I think we're probably almost done. Sorry, I had to look and see who called. I apologize for that. Next, White Christmas. I think it's fun just to see what comes to my eye without even looking. Um. Hmm, I think this guy comes to my eye. The squirrel, who makes him? He's number one. The Victoria Sampler. <laughs> Victoria Sampler, Country Cottage Needleworks, Ink Circles, Miss Crescent's Crown, Brooks Books, Raise the Roof. Um, uh, it's Finally Finished, M Designs, and Fresh Thread Studio. Raise the Roof, that's number seven. Raise the Roof's always out of the box. <laughs> it's always a little bit. Ink circles, what I do like about the inks, oh, I didn't even see this, okay. What I do like about the ink circles is I didn't realize that's a book. That's cool. It's a book, a Christmas book. That's actually awesome, awesome. Okay, are we done? We must be done. I don't think there's anything left. Yeah, I think we're done here. And there, here's all your recipes. Oh, you've got everything from brown sugar spice cake to boiled coffee with an egg in it, to turtle bars, to hot pepper jam, for the Christmas salad. Wow, lychees and contrao and red. Ooh. Nikki's Creations, flour, um, apple crumble, for the Christmas salad. I love that. Just a bunch of stuff. I'm going to end tonight with uh, reading you a passage from Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, which is my favorite book of all time. I was lucky, nine, n lucky enough to find this small pocket version, which something about it. What do I usually do? I usually just pick a passage randomly. So, here we go. A Christmas Carol. Expect the second night on the next night at the same hour, the third upon the next night when the last stroke of twelve has ceased to vibrate. Look to me no more and look that for your own sake you remember what has passed between us. When it had said these words, the specter took its wrapper from the table and bound its round its head as before, 
Scrooge knew this by the smart sound its teeth made. When the jaws were brought together by the bandage, just Marley putting the bandage around his head, he ventured to raise his eyes again and found his supernatural visit confronting, visitor confronting him in an erect attitude with its chain wound over and about its arm. It's a dire message. Be good to one another, pray, and know that no matter what happens in life, there is a, there is something that we don't understand that guides us all through it. You cannot be sad. You cannot be sad if you realize that we are on a path that God has chosen for us. So with that, keep stitching. Have a wonderful evening, and thank you so much for watching. If you like my videos, and I really hope you do, because if I don't get feedback, I'm not going to make them. I just want to know somebody's watching, that's all. But if you like the videos, please say so below. And I try to, I do respond to everybody, so, and I read them. I read your responses, and I, 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 I love when people give me helpful hints because, especially if I ask a question. But anyway, have a great evening and a great weekend, and I will report back from the Keys next time.